Moin! In this video I'll show you how I turn 3D printed resin and FDM prints into custom car hood ornaments and emblems using electroplating. Step by step, the whole process, every single detail. Along the way, I'll share some extra tips and tricks to make it easier. And after about 10 minutes, you'll be able to talk shop and call yourself an electroplating 3D prints expert. So, ready to dive in? So, basically the same crap as always. Exactly. Wake up Hendrik, time for a brand new tutorial, no time to waste, let's jump right in. We're kicking things off with the 16K resin printer and cracking out some awesome hood ornaments. Now here's the beauty of electroplating 3D prints, you can electroform literally anything you want. That's super practical, especially when it comes to car parts. A lot of older parts aren't made anymore, so if you need them, you've got to make them yourself. And here's a question I get all the time, what's better for playing? resin prints or FDM prints. I love resin prints because it comes out of the printer already silky smooth, but I also really enjoy FDM. With a couple of tricks, the results turn out amazing, which I'll show you in just a minute. Just a quick note on the supports, I like to warm them up with a heat gun before curing. That way they come off pretty easily, just be careful not to overheat. Once the supports are gone, you can cure the print. For electroplating the rule is, the longer it's cured, the better. I usually keep my 3D prints in the UV chamber for about 10 minutes on each side. Now let's switch over to FDM 3D printing and make a few batches. I've got this boom piece here, a custom Jerry emblem and a mods logo. I printed all of these pretty easily on my old Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. For me, FDM combined with electroplating always means the challenge of getting the best possible print quality right from the start. So tune your prints, use a filament you know and can control. You have to do some post-processing anyway, but try to get them as watertight as possible with minimal visible layer lines and no nasty Z-scars. That's what I kept in mind here. Did I mention I love FDM printing? So I finally solved the problem I always had with FDM prints. They are never watertight. Some of you know this from vase prints, water seeps in between the layers. In my case, the electrolyte from the bath penetrates the 3D print and later seeps back out, ruining everything. That was a big issue. I saw something on social media and decided to buy it. Yes, I actually bought it myself. It's originally meant for sealing vase prints so nothing leaks but since my electrolyte also contains a lot of water, I wanted to give it a try. The idea is simple, I pour the stuff into a container, let the parts soak for about 5 minutes, wipe them off and then pour the rest back. I let it cure for 24 hours and now I can focus on other problems because this worked perfectly. The other issues are sending and post-processing the prints. It's not just getting them smooth like with vapor smoothing, especially on flat surfaces they really need to be even so the metal effect comes through. So take your time and work them properly. I've got a great tool for that and as always you'll find everything I use in the description. Give yourself enough time and clean things up nicely and the results will be so much better later. And if all the sanding drives you crazy, just relax with the double espresso, though that might finish off your arms even more. Or maybe play some games. Or some really bad guitar. I don't know. So the resin prints are now ready for conductive paint, but the FDM prints still need some work. I treat those with car filler and primer. The idea is to get everything super smooth so there won't be tiny scratches visible in the plating later because you really do see everything in the end. So first car filler, then sanding it smooth, then more filler or primer and sanding again, each time with a finer grit. That's how these parts should look in the end. By the way, this is a very good point to mention that I always do all of this in a well ventilated space and I always wear gloves, a respirator and goggles. And I really mean it, please do the same, no hobby is worth getting hurt. For the respirator I use ABE1 combination filters. 
check this out. I mounted the individual 3D prints on sticks so I can spray them with conductive paint more easily. Just use skewers, glue them on with hot glue and you can hold everything perfectly while spraying. Wait, what paint? Why? For electroforming you need a highly conductive surface and I prepare that by coating the prints with graphite paint or copper conductive paint. I use DIY graphite paint as well. To apply these paints I use an airbrush with 0.5mm needle. Dilute the paints and try to work wet so that the paint doesn't build up. This is by far the most difficult part of the whole process. Once you get this right the rest is not that critical. I hang the coated prints directly into the bath and often it's easiest to build some kind of holder with dummy pieces beforehand. Also make sure to prep the wires with a bit of steel wool first. Alright here we go, I'm using 5 liters of acidic copper electrolyte with a pH of 1 based on sulfuric acid. For that I've got a lab power supply that can deliver 5 amps of current. I also place a magnetic stirrer under the electrolyte to keep the bath moving. That makes the plating more even. I then connect two copper anodes in parallel to the positive pole of the power supply. The anodes are wrapped in coffee filters to catch any debris. The 3D prints are simply connected to the negative pole. I also have a small rotation device, pretty cool, it makes things even more uniform but it's not absolutely necessary. So how much current is needed? Smart people built a website for that. You'll find the link in another video I've already linked here. So I set the correct current and make sure it stays constant. This mode is usually CC mode. The voltage adjusts automatically. I'm working my way through all the parts with this method. Basically it's always the same routine. Four to five hours of plating and then polishing everything to a shine. How you polish is up to you. I usually use different polishing compounds in increasing fineness. With the Jerry emblem I hit the limits of my tank and I had to scale up one step. And it doesn't get easier with 15 liters, the electrolyte behaves differently. In general I'd recommend always starting small. Here I also needed larger anodes. Keep in mind anode surface area should be at least match the 3D print surface area. All in all it's a wild ride. Look I even bought a cheap polarized filter so now I can film inside the electrolyte. It's the little things. But anyway that's it. After a week everything is finally done and I now can pour the electrolyte back and filter it. Before we reveal the results a big thank you to all my wonderful channel members. I really appreciate your support. Thank you. So. Here we go, everything nicely copper plated but leaving copper untreated is not a good idea. That's why you can now electroplate other metals on top. Let me show you with this duck, it's bright nickel plated, not perfect but hey good enough. For that I use a nickel electrolyte bath but pen plating works as well. Another great option is gold, it plates beautifully onto nickel and protects the metal really well. Nickel isn't my favorite electrolyte since it's very toxic and requires excellent ventilation. Check this out. It all took way too long but in the end it finally came together. I made a crazy mix of parts and tried to mount them onto my car somehow. Well let's see how long they stay on. If you want to see it in real life you usually find me at various 3D printing events like the rap rap festivals where I showcase my work. And wow I still have so much b-roll so here it is. Hope you enjoyed it. Next time we'll do something different I promise. Tschüss.